in this tutorial let's work on writing a spike uh, to understand looping around errors and then look at a lot more stuff Control shift r and i would want to go to the array spike test and now i would want to actually understand the concept of looping an array how do i loop an array so at test i would want to understand looping in an error so that's basically what we want to understand so i've just created uh, let's put some values in here so i'll give assign some values 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 so that uh, i can't give when i give the values i can't give the index so that's good um, now i would want to just do a for loop around this so for uh, scores is an array so i would want scores i would want to be able to loop around this course so each value is called a score and the type of the value is int so int score scores open bracket close bracket and the code rest of the code for the if goes in here so now i would want to be able to loop around this array and we want to be print the values of the array we are going to use uh, output statement for the first time so how do you print something to the array is uh, there's a class called system in which there is a variable called out using which you can print println is a method in which is defined in the system dot out class it's a print string class and you can actually print this code so this is how it works so the syntax of println is very simple you can say system.out.println score and it prints all this code so let's see what happens when this test is run the test would obviously succeed because we have not put in any asserts in here uh, it's just going to print out a value to the console so let's see what value it prints out to the console if you look at the output on the right hand side in the console it's printing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's actually whenever you it goes through the loop here, it prints when it goes through the loop first time, this value is assigned to score. So score would be 1. When it goes through the loop next time, the value would be 1. When it goes through the loop next time, the value would be value of score would be 2. And similarly, when it has when we define an array of student objects as it is in here for example in the course instance test when we define an array of objects like here when we loop through the uh, for the first when the student would be equal to student 1 in the first time student will be equal to student 2 in the next time in the loop so now let's uh, since we have a good understanding of uh, the uh, students of the array so of the array let's go ahead and now try and uh, do a bit of stuff inside uh, the course instance class using the array so now i know that this student actually uh, is going to be uh, of each element of the array so first to calculate the average i would want to be able to find the sum and do the average after that by dividing by length so I would first have a variable called int called sum uh, and I put sum is equal to I'll initialize it to zero. So basically sum is zero and I would want then to add sum is equal to sum plus student dot get math marks. So now what is happening here uh, and then I can actually do uh, sum by int number of students how many students are there uh, i can get this by actually looking at the students array so students dot length that's the number of students which are present so uh, sum i think when i say return sum by number of students i should be fine so 
sum by number of students and i would also need to typecast this to double just uh, because it's not uh, as discussed earlier integer by integer would give me a integer result and not a dub i mean a floating point value okay uh, that's out of the way now let's get to the logic which we have coded in here uh, what we are doing in here is adding uh, is a, what we call a expression so what happens when you have an expression is there are two sides of an expression the expression on the left hand side and the right hand side so there's an expression on the left hand side which is sum and the expression on the right hand side is sum plus students dot get math marks um, what you're going to what this is going to do how an, how an assignment works it is it is it computes the value on the right hand side so if you look at the right hand side here uh, there is actually sum plus uh, student dot get mark math marks so initially when it comes to into this loop the value of sum would be zero so and the value in student would be the first student so what it does is it gets this first student marks and then adds it to the sum which is zero so and then takes the value of this and then puts it in the sum so the sum becomes whatever value of marks the student one has got and when the loop comes in next time sum has got uh, the value of up to the first student that's only the first student what happens is it to the value of the first student student dot get marks this would give the value of the second student so it happens sum plus the value of the second student so it's a sum of all the marks up to that particular instance so it loops through gets at the end of the loop sum will be the total number of marks uh, sum of marks of all these students so it would basically be the sum of mathematics marks of all the students and at the end what we are doing is doing a sum by number of students that's basically what is the average so let's let's now run the j unit test for math average uh, uh, so this test which was failing earlier let's see if it passes now all shift x run j unit test okay it goes through fine so the logic which we have implemented for this is working fine what you have learned about right now is a concept of array how you can access values from an array how you can loop over an array and different things about it uh, now that we have the course instance working and the average also working i would just want to concentrate a bit on making these things read uh, clear um, i'm just checking for the name here so i don't need to really chess at the mark so i've created students uh, i would also make it easy for myself like by inlining this student variables that's all shift i to do the inline so now probably like i'm just creating a new student directly and putting the values back in the array so it helps me to read the test easily so if i look at this test right now it actually helps me to read this test uh, easily uh, i would only want to leave the values which are important to the test in a test so this actually doesn't really matter so i put something of this kind so the course instance whatever value i pass in doesn't really matter what we are testing is whether the strengths are properly test in here so that's good uh, the other thing here is actually even the names of the course instance here i don't really bother about that so i'll just want to make this little bit more clear and even this strength name actually doesn't really matter to me whatever it is what I'm worried about is this 25 and this 26 and the fact that actually this 25.5 is a average of this. I would want to represent that in my test. I would want actually to be able to do this and this is the actual calculation which happens. So this helps me to identify when I look at the test, set math marks 25, 26 and I'm asserting that it's 25. Oh, okay. This method is going to do this. So that's the in, intention that this test conveys to me. 
so that's good so the test succeeds uh, this is basically what we are doing this is called refactoring uh, refactoring is the uh, step where actually I make the code better um, every time you do some piece of code you should make sure that it is maintainable and whoever comes in next would be able to understand the piece of code that you are writing and refactoring is okay now that we have understood the concept of an array let's go ahead and try uh, uh, to see if this works for all the situations okay there are situations for which arrays are not cut off let's see one of the situations right now i want to test the calculation of average uh, but in between of a semester actually a new student has got added in so new student added in between i want to test this scenario so in this scenario that's after the students are set into course instance i want to add a new element into this array that's one of the problems of an array the array does not allow us to add or to modify uh, the number of elements in the array after it's declared so once I have declared the array on this particular line I can't change the number of things in an array so arrays are really good stuff uh, to use uh, because they are very lightweight and they you can easily uh, use them without any overhead uh, but it's only possible to use arrays in situations where you ha actually know the number of elements that the element the array is going to contain ahead of when you are declaring the array there will be situations where i don't really know how many things would be there in the uh, list so in those kind of situations the array would no cannot be used so in those kind of situations we go and use something called ar array list the array list allows addition of things in between at any point in time let's do a spike to understand array lists and a lot more in the next tutorials we are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated don't forget to click the subscribe button if you like this video please give a thumbs up and feel free to share this video thanks for watching until next time bye